Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and I'm delighted to say that joining me on the program today is Salman Tariq, who is Vice President, Europe, Middle East and Africa for Optiva. Hello, Salman. Very good to see you, and thanks so much for taking part in our program today. Now, the journey to the cloud is a common theme for everyone in the telecoms industry, but there are many opinions as to how to get there what do you see with your customers, both core operators and perhaps more interestingly, the MVNOs, MVNEs, who are now redefining a lot of the traditional rules? Yeah, thanks, uh, Guy, for having me today. Um, Optiva being a specialized player in the telco monetization. So we do work with the large uh, core operators, tier ones, and we do work with a lot of MVNOs, MVNEs who are trying to disrupt the market. And we do see a difference in strategies and approaches on how they are taking the cloud journey. Right? A common element, of course, is the fact that uh, there's a growing belief in cloud. Uh, the transformation to cloud is inevitable. Uh, but I think both type of operators have different motivations uh, and approaches to this journey. And uh, we say it's a journey because I think it's more than just a technology transformation. It involves people, it involves culture change, it involves skills. And I think for, for the larger telcos, uh, it involves a platform first thinking kind of an approach where they've been doing things mostly in-house, uh, all in traditionally, and it requires a more collaborative way of building new things. Now with, with tier ones, I mean, predominantly what we see is there's a drive to move uh, non-network kind of workloads into public cloud. Uh, but on the network side, uh, the push still remains to build more private cloud kind of environments. Um, what we see on the on the MVNO, MVNE side and the greenfield operators who are trying to come into the market, uh, they are taking cloud-first approach. Uh, they obviously have the advantage of not having a legacy to deal with, and they can go directly into, into a cloud-first deployment. And I think if any growing new entrant operator, this is also a, a great way of setting up the business because it gives them that OPEX elasticity to try and align their growing business with how the demand is evolving, right? Uh, and these, I believe, are new uh, digital bond businesses, which uh, are in a best position to disrupt the market because cloud gives them the platform to do that. Then we also see um, hybrid and uh, kind of multi-cloud use cases. And our experience has been that they have more use case driven things and predominantly uh, more regional specific things uh, driven by situations of data gravity or regulation. Uh, one interesting use case that we see is uh, disaster recovery on the cloud. And uh, we have enabled a few customers uh, uh, for that use case. And it has a particularly quick ROI because, uh, as you know, in telcos today, the DR systems are, are typically cold standby investments. So what we are doing as Optiva is uh, we are building our products to be cloud agnostic. So we want to give flexibility to our customers to be able to do their own customized path and personalized path towards cloud and have the same seamless experience. Uh, this is going to be the core focus for Optiva that we build products that enable that flexibility for our customers. Thanks, Salman. Now, BSS systems are a huge source of data, and as telcos seek to create personalized and high value packages for targeted customer groups and personas, where do you see all this going? Yeah, you raise an important aspect here. Um, look, in a, in a highly saturated telco environment, uh, personalization and hyper-personalization is going to be the key uh, to drive growth. Um, if you look at it from a digital consumer perspective, the, the expectations are evolving, the expectation bar is set quite high. And uh, in general, what we notice is that uh, they're not shy to switch uh, if operators fall short of that expectation. Uh, customers are expecting very simple price plan, they're expecting a real-time experience, they're expecting a superb digital experience, and they expect actually telcos to evolve to, to be able to recommend price plans to, to them uh, based on their needs and their patterns. Now, BSS systems play a key role here because uh, they, they host uh, valuable data in terms of you know, usage pattern of these customers, in terms of churn propensity, in terms of RFM analysis. And what we see is, I mean, combined with the real-time capabilities of these systems, uh, telcos can actually uh, capture those very narrow upsell windows which in a traditional CVM approach, they would have missed out. Um, what we see coming from the cloud world is, uh, of course, uh, uh, democratization of AI and ML kind of capabilities, which are available now. 
So this data could be enriched with other complementary sources. They could run more complex uh, data algorithms on that and drive even deeper insights into their customers and get to that segment of one personalized offer and capture that additional revenue opportunity. Well, with every new sailor generation, every new G that we see, we see excitement around new products and services and, of course, new revenue potential for the telcos. However, with 4G, telcos arguably fail to capture the full economic value and lost so much to the OTTs. 5G's also got off to a tricky start. So how will Optiva help telcos reap rewards from the ongoing 5G era? Uh, you, you are spot on, Guy. And I think uh, 5G right now, is, the hype of 5G is in overdrive mode. Uh, and telcos seem determined to capitalize on that. Um, if you look at the differences between the previous network upgrades, which were predominantly focusing on a better network speed, uh, 5G does all that with, uh, with improved latency, plus it offers the capabilities to having customized uh, networks uh, for enterprises for their specific use cases. Now, this is an interesting new area, and in order to capitalize on that, telcos need to change the way they have, uh, they have done business with enterprises till today, right? Uh, the biggest value we see on 5G is sitting today more on the on the enterprise side, and uh, I have to I have to say that I mean uh, the enterprise is not a comfort zone today or not the sweet spot of telcos, uh, and they they puts them in a direct competition with some of the technology players, even the likes of hyperscalers, Google's and Amazon's. So it will require a different thinking on how they will approach uh, 5G. Uh, on the consumer side, it is expected that the uh, consumer ARPUs for 5G are not going to change much, but there are interesting opportunities like uh, smart home, for example. Right? Uh, a single telco offer into a connected home, whether it's mobility or it's fixed, uh, coupled with some uh, you know, uh, high-value solutions like uh, smart home uh, and, and automation there, uh, that's where the cap telcos can capitalize on the opportunity. So it, it, it is still early days for 5G. I think it still needs to prove its economic value. But um, the whole transition from telco to techno, or as you mentioned, from CSP to DSP, uh, that would require telcos to do a few fundamental things like uh, simplification and agility. I mean, on BSS side, we have some data points and we see that a typical telco is hosting more than 1,000 plans on their systems, uh, which limits their ability to move faster. So this needs to be simplified. Uh, telcos cannot afford any longer to sit behind the fences and watch OTTs and other players uh, be the first movers in the market. So it would require appetite for experimentation. It would require for them to be the first mover, even for use cases where maybe the ROI is not fully proven. And, and last but not the least, um, telcos do have a strength uh, on the enterprise side today. They enjoy uh, a significant brand loyalty. Uh, they they have uh, they have reputation. Plus, they have those critical relationships. So, I think they need to build their offers. You know, building on top of those things uh, in order to be successful in that market. Yeah. Now, you mentioned earlier the transition of telco to techco or CSP to DSP. Can you elaborate on this digital transformation journey, especially with what you see in the market around the role of BSS in this transformation? Yeah, absolutely. So, so BSS platforms uh, play a key role in this transformation. I mean, if you look at it, break it down to two broad areas. Um, so BSS platforms sit at the back end to enable uh, a superb digital experience for, for the end customers, right? Uh, it is the one single place where that all the journeys are orchestrated. So it's, it's a key element to enabling that capability. Uh, plus the fact that we see uh, in this evolving world, there'll be a bigger breadth of services that need to be monetized. So BSS systems need to scale and they need to be flexible to, to be able to monetize those services uh, beyond traditional connectivity. Uh, another key aspect uh, is uh, on the back end, uh, where if, you, if I give you a data point, I mean, typically the larger telcos, if uh, they're upgrading and technology evolution cycles for these platforms are typically 12 to 20 months. Uh, and imagine that putting that into equation while competing with the likes of uh, Google's and Amazon's uh, this is going to be a challenge, right? So what we are doing on our side uh, as Optiva, uh, we are helping to solve this problem by bringing automation and cloud native agility uh, into these platforms. Uh, what it means is that we are able to upgrade, evolve technology platforms much faster, 
we are able to uh, offer in the hands of business people ability to configure the platform rather than customizing it. Um, and we are able to reduce the complexity of operations by offering even a full SaaS model where our customers do not need to worry about platform and they can focus on their business. And the platform evolution is, uh, is completely handled uh, in a managed manner. Right? Uh, th this is a key part of the evolution from going from a telco to a techno uh, where you know, um, the drive is to have uh, uh, the company seen as more agile, telco seen as more agile. And if you look at it, the investor community, uh, they value the techno companies uh, uh, much higher than, than telcos. Um, and pre predominantly because their ability to move faster and ability to drive into new use cases uh, much faster. Now, beyond the cloud journey, what thoughts do you have on how BSS capabilities must evolve to support a digital customer, especially as innovative technologies are emerging, such as, you know, the metaverse, blockchain, crypto, all these new web technologies that are emerging that could become paths to new revenue opportunities for telcos? Yeah, so this is an interesting area, definitely. And this puts uh, BSS technology players like ourselves. Uh, in a position to explore a much wider market, uh, obviously. Uh, and that market crosses your traditional uh, telco uh, boundaries, right? Um, a lot of these technologies, as you know, are still in the evolving phase. Um, but we do see a convergence point uh, between them and the evolution of the BSS platforms, uh, which is something we are closely monitoring. Um, to give you a few examples, uh, Metaverse, for example, is expected to ride the 5G connectivity wave. Uh, there will be specific connectivity needs for, for Metaverse. And the BSS platforms need to evolve to be able to support monetization of those connectivity use cases. Uh, we talk about, for example, you know, Slice for a smart class or AI as a service, uh, just to name a few. Right? Uh, another interesting use case we see is around uh, crypto and blockchain uh, being the basis for future smart contracts. Um, as you know, BSS platforms today enable those enterprise contracts uh, there is also a significant piece of, uh, you know, business to business billing, settlement billing, uh, which are enabled by these platforms. And we see crypto and we see blockchain uh, being uh, an enabler for those future contracts uh, and enabling telcos to significantly simplify the way they settle and then they, the way they onboard partners. Right. So it is still a, a, a interesting growing area. There's a lot of buzz around it, but we are watching it closely. But there is definitely uh, a convergence point we see in the future uh, for these two to, to, to converge together. Well, we must leave it there for now. Salman, good talking with you, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Kai. Okay.